What's up everybody? It's Carolina Hitman from Cracker Hunters. Here again to do another Sideshow Collectibles review. And today I got a quarter of the dead piece that I've been wanting to review for the last week or so. But of course, y'all all know my overtime's been keeping me busy. But um, I got Demophile from the quarter of the dead, the Reaper's General. And as you can see, this thing is huge. This thing is pretty big. Um, this is an awesome piece. I was excited to get it because, of course, you all know I'm a big fan of the Quarter of the Dead line coming out of Sideshow Collectibles. Uh, to me, that's their, that's their best line, in my opinion. Well, their most dependable line as far as quality and everything. But um, I'm ready to get this thing started, get this review going on. So, let's jump on into it. So, everybody, as you can see, this thing is massive. <laughs> I think it's um, a little over 31 inches tall. Of course, his name is Demethile. He's from the Quarter of the Dead. And of course, you all know from my previous reviews from the Quarter of the Dead, they're part of, there's three factions in the underworld, uh, the bone, the flesh, and the spirit. Demethile, as you can tell, obviously is part of the bone faction. And he's actually um, the general over Death's armies, and he's in charge of the harvesting of souls. I was so excited when I opened this piece up because this is actually, I think, one of the biggest pieces I have right now. And with it being a quarter of the dead, I'm always excited when I get a new piece from them. And I was not disappointed at all. Like I said, this the size of this thing. I mean, it's, like I said, over 30, almost three feet tall. And quality never escapes the quarter of the dead, which I'm very happy to say that. But um, I really wish there's one complaint I have on it, which y'all will find, that, find out in a few, probably 30 seconds or so, when I start my up close and personal review of the statue. But I only have really one main complaint on the statue and that's it. But without further ado, let's jump in on into this up close and personal view I like to give my um, audience, I say. <laughs> but let's get started, guys. So as always, I like to start with the head, which I think is always a good place to start. Which the paint was really good. I really love the look of the eyes. It, got, it has a little bit of gloss on it to give that shiny feel to it. And just the whites right on the top of the blue really brings it out, really stands out a lot as far as the skull and it really being the only blue part in it. I love the intricacy of the armor. I love the designs, as you can see. Get a little close up of all this. I said, man, Quarter of the Dead Man has really done a good job with each one of his releases. I can't really speak highly enough of it. Let me give you all a good look at all this. Turn it around. There we go. As you can all see right here, with his armor. And just all the little I guess, I don't know what those are, all the little symbols, excuse me, little symbols on the, each part of the armor. I think it's pretty awesome. I think it's really detailed. Shows a lot of love for the line and character itself. Look at the, his arm. And each one of these armors, I, I mean, each one of the pieces of armor look like it's this, depicting some kind of scene throughout a battle or something. Like the angels from the book um, on the front piece. It's just like it just depicts um, a battle or something. Of course, let me give you a good. Um, well, actually, I had two complaints. There's one I don't. There's, there it goes, right there. I do wish it would have been more seamless. When you because as you can tell, that's where you connect the arm at. I do wish it would have been more seamless. Not even just the 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 space right here, but even the color itself is kind of off-putting. But I guess for a piece this big, especially as thin as his arms are, I guess you want to kind of split it up so it can be easier to ship. And so you can even tell right here where the color really, you know, has two different color tones. It's a little weird, and I think that that should have been a little bit more hidden. I wish it would have connected further under his armor so it wouldn't have been as noticeable. You know, a good close-up of that, of his hand. I so said, they still do a good job on the statues, you know. 
I can understand, you know, some of the things you have to sacrifice to ship, and I understand that. So it's it's a it's a small complaint, but a complaint nonetheless. But I also understand why they probably had to do it that way, just for shipping purposes. Give y'all a good look at his baby nub, as I like to call it. As soon as I saw it, I was, that's what I was going to name it, baby nub. I don't understand why you need three arms on one side and one arm on one, but, you know, who am I to question the other world? <laughs> this little chain mail underneath there. Of course, that's not real chain mail. It actually would have been cool if they would have been able to find a way to implement that, but, you know, it is what it is. Small complaints. Let's so try to give y'all all a detailed look at all this armor. Even around the back. And I like the cloth itself. You no, know, you can um, actually pose it. I guess it's got that wire on the inside, on the edges, to where you can actually pose it a little bit. I haven't took the time to po set mine up to pose yet, but you can pose it. And I like that a little bit, because I think all the Quarter of the Deads, except for with the exception of Zial, I think they all have some bit of cloth and wire in them to be able to pose it. Now, here's where I have my one complaint in, and that's the scythe. It's not metal. And I think if you're going to be a harvester of souls, your scythe should be metal. That's just my opinion. That's just me. I think it should have been metal. I think it would have been, would have stood out a lot more if it had been metal. But too late now. But I am, I am pleased that when I read up on the death statue coming out, I think sometime next month, between next month and May, his scythe is metal, which I'd have been furious if they did not make death scythe metal. That's like a main part of him. Of course, you got the change right here. If you all look at the base, and of course, even though you can't really see it because he's actually standing on, on his, but he's actually standing on the symbol for the bone faction in the underworld. And let me lift up, yep, let me give you a good look at the underneath. He even has some good armor underneath there. But you know what, I, I really do appreciate, you know, Court of the Dead and the Sideshow really going all out, even on the parts where, you know, you're not really going to see it because it's covered up with a lot of all of the cloth. But I do appreciate them, you know, still put the level of detail to something that you're probably not going to see much of. And I, that's why I support the Court of the Dead so much, just from all the little small details. Like, look at that. I, I really like that. I'm trying to get this cloth off the way for y'all. It's a lot of it. Let's see, all the way up. There you go. I always try to keep my camera as still as possible because nothing irritates me more than a shaky cam when you're doing a review. So I try to keep it as still as possible. It's got some weird boots on these two little p pointing things right there on his boots. And of course, the base. All the different little skulls in there. This isn't, this isn't as intricate as, you know, one of the other, some of the other Court of the Dead bases. Which is still a good base, don't get me wrong. It's just not as intricate as the other ones. Especially like, um, Mother Vestros, his base was amazing. But then again, when you're a jester, I guess you gotta really stand out. We got another once over. I like the way his skull looks too. There we go, crack the one open. Little chain mail. He says armor from the back. It looks just as good as from the front. Of course, the the 
scythe pole, um, pole, whatever you want to call it, whatever connects to it, is not really wood. Which I really wish they would do something like that. Hope they do that on death statue. That nothing they would really make it stand out. But I think it makes up for it as far as all the little details in his armor. That takes a lot. I mean, that's for a mass produced piece, it's a lot of work. Just putting those little things inside his armor and everything, and it's a lot of damn work. I don't know if I'd have the patience for that. Give y'all one more look at his baby nub. Just like I said, awesome job, Sideshow. Just like I said, just have a couple complaints on it. But other than that, like I said, nothing too bad. I just really wish his arm would have been a little, a lot more covered up so you wouldn't see the seam and where you connected to that. That's about really the only main complaint I have in the statue because there's really nothing else wrong with it. You know, paint's good. Armor, cloth, cloth, everything else is pretty good on it. Like I said, I really enjoy looking at this one. Not as, de not as detailed or intricate as some of the other, other pieces from Sideshow, but hey, not every piece can be Mela Vestros. <laughs> but I think I've given y'all a good enough view of this huge piece. So I think it is time to get on with the closing. So overall, I'm pleased with the statue. Um, not as intricate as some of Sideshow's other releases lately, you know, with the Court of the Dead, you know, Melavestros, Cleopsis, um, Zial. Not as intricate as them, but I guess when you have to make something this big, you have to make some kind of sacrifices or charge in an outrageous amount of money. But it's still pretty expensive, don't get me wrong, it ain't cheap. But I still like it. I think it's a really good statue. Like I said, my only really main complaint is that it has that seam in the arm. I think it, that should have been a, a little bit more well hidden so it wouldn't have been as noticeable. But other than that, I really like it. Like I said, the intricacy in the armor as far as all the little designs that it has on there. The cloth, of course, I wish the scythe would have been metal, but hey, that's just me. But other than that, this is a really detailed statue. Um, I think there's still some pieces left in Sideshow if I'm not mistaken. If there are, I'll double check. And if it still has some available, of course you guys know, I'll put a link to this particular statue in the description. So, I hope I've given you all a detailed enough look to really make a decision on whether this piece is worth the price. Um, if you're a fan of the Court of the Dead, hey, of course you're gonna pick it up anyway because you want the entire collection, like me. <laughs> but um, if you're still just a fan of detailed work and good quality statues. I think this one, along with the rest of the Court of the Dead, are worthy purchases, and I really recommend picking some up. But I think that's it for the day. I appreciate y'all joining me. So at the end of the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell button so you can be notified whenever I um, post some new reviews. I try to keep up as most as I can, but of course, like this video and the last one, Bennett is gonna be spaced out a little bit more because of the overtime I've been working at work. Uh, sorry people, but hey, duty calls. But I'll try to release them, like I said, at least once a week until my overtime is over. So all my, all my subscribers, please be patient. I haven't forgot about y'all. Just once a week, I will at least try to release that. That is my promise to you. Once a week at least until my overtime is over. Then I'll start releasing them on a regular basis like I used to, like two or three videos a week. But thank you for joining me. Hope to see you next time. This is Carolina Hitman from Carrick and Hunters. Signing out.